a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Moondramp Arai Moondramp Arai is a 1982 Indian Tamil language romantic drama film written, directed and filmed by Balu Mahendra. The film features Kamal Hassan and Sridevi in the lead roles, while Silk Smita, Pornam Vishwanathan and YG Mahendra play supporting roles. The music for the film was composed by Eli Raja, with lyrics written by Kaneda San, Verima Tu, and Gangai Amran. It also featured the last song written by Kaneda San to be recorded before his death in 1981. Moondramp Arai is about a school teacher, Asrini Vas, who rescues a woman, Bhaga Lakshmi, who is suffering from retrograde amnesia, from a brothel, and protects her in his house located in Keti. The rest of the film shows how Bhaga Lakshmi recovers her memory with Srinivas' help. Moondramp Arai is based on Balu Mahendra's brief relationship with actress Shobha, who died in 1980, shortly after their marriage. It was predominantly shot in Uti and Keti, with further shooting also taking place in Bangalore. Moondramp Arai was released on 19 February 1982 to positive critical reception. It was a box office success and had a theatrical run of 329 days. The film won two National Film Awards, Best Actor for Hassan, and Best Cinematography for Mahendra. It also won the Best Director Award for Mahendra at the Filmfare Awards, and five Tamil Nadu State Film Awards, including Best Film, Best Actor, and Best Actress. The film was dubbed in Telugu under the title Vasantar Kokila. Mahendra remade the film in Hindi as Sadma, with Hasan, Sridevi, and Smita reprising their roles from the original version. Plot Bhagalakshmi, a young woman, has a car accident while returning from a party and is hospitalized with severe head injuries. When she recovers, she is diagnosed with retrograde amnesia and she fails to recognize her own parents. She mentally regresses to the state of a child. While she is undergoing treatment, she is kidnapped and sold to the madam of a brothel. Asrinivas, also known as Chinu, comes to Chennai to meet his old friend. Together, they visit the brothel to relax. The madam sends Bhagalakshmi, renamed Vijaya, to his room. Chinu realizes that she is mentally still a child and pities her. He learns that she is from a cultured family, and that she was kidnapped, and forced into prostitution. Chinu returns the next day and, after paying a huge sum to the madam, takes Vijaya out, supposedly on a pleasure trip. He takes her away to Keti, where he is working as a school teacher. He takes her to his residence where he protects her and also pampers her like a child. Viji, as she is called by Chinu, has completely forgotten her past and becomes very close to him. When Viji accidentally spills ink over Chinu's documents, angering him, their relationship is threatened, but they reconcile. Later, a local woodcutter named Nataraj lusts for Viji and nearly assaults her, but she manages to save herself. When she tells Chinu about it, he becomes livid with rage and almost kills Nataraj, but is stopped by his neighbors who were informed of the incident by Viji. Meanwhile, the wife of Chinas' headmaster is attracted to Chinu, though he does not reciprocate her feelings. Viji's father Vedachalam, who was searching her through the police, releases a newspaper advertisement about his lost daughter, a co-passenger who had traveled with Chinu and Viji from Chennai to Uti by train gives them a lead. Chinu takes Viji to an Ayurvedic medical practitioner and leaves her there for a day's treatment. In his absence, the police come to his house searching for Viji. Finally, the police learn that Viji is getting treated at the doctor's place and reach there. Chinu is unable to come as he is afraid of police action. The treatment goes through successfully. Viji regains her memory and completely forgets about the period between her accident and recovery. Vedachalam and his wife are happy and decide to leave. From the doctor, Vedachalam learns that the person who had brought her there had been taking good care of their daughter. He withdraws his police complaint and they begin their journey to Chennai with Viji. After the police leave, Chinu comes running after the car in which Viji is traveling. He follows them to the railway station and tries to gain Viji's attention, but she is unable to recognize him. Chinu acts like a dancing monkey that Viji developed a liking for, but Viji, unable to comprehend, thinks he is insane and begging for food. Chinu continues his futile attempts to gain her attention, 
and the train eventually leaves, with Viji not recognizing him. Chino, who was injured while chasing her car and trying to get her attention, is left alone. Heartbroken. Development. Moondramparai was produced by Jithai Agarajan and G. Saravanan under their production banner, Satya Jyoti Films. A. Ramaswamy and D. E. Vasu were in charge of art direction and editing respectively. In an interview with Anu Hussana on the talk show Coffee with Anu, director Balu Mahendra stated that Moondram Pirai was inspired by the suicide of his wife, actress Shobha. She was 17 years old at the time of her death in 1980. According to S. Shiva Kumar of the Hindu, the climax of the film was a clear allusion to how Shobha left Mahendra without warning. In C. B. Rayos' review of the film's Hindi version, Sadma, the English translation of the film's title, Moondramp Pirai is given as the third generation. The title Moondramp Pirai literally means the crescent seen on the third day following New Moon Day. According to Kamal Hassan, while Mahendra narrated the story of Moondramp Pirai, to him, Hassan listened to Mahendra for about 20 minutes before accepting the role of Chinu. The role of Pagalakshmi was initially offered to Sripriya, who could not accept the role due to her prior commitments, before Sridevi was chosen for it. Pornam Vishwanathan was cast as the school headmaster, while Silk Smita, who had done around 20 films by then and was considered only for performing item numbers, was cast as the headmaster's sexually excited wife. Filming Moondrampurai was predominantly shot in Uti and Keti, a small town situated close to the former. Shooting also took place in Bangalore. Mahendra did not find hiring a train expensive at that time. As a result, he hired a train for the film scene where Hassan and Sridevi depart for Keti, and another train for the film's climax which was shot at the Keti railway station. Although it was raining on the day the climax was shot, Mahendra decided to continue shooting the scene even though the rain was not part of the film's script. It took nearly three days to film the climax. In the post-production phase, Smith's voice was dubbed by Anurada. Mahendra supervised Anurada's dubbing session and taught her the methods to emote the dialogues for Smita in the film. While the film was under production the team was scoffed at for making a film about a youth falling in love with an amnesiac and that the film will not be a box office success. The film uses intense violin music in both its opening and closing credits. In April 2006, Mahendra said that the inclusion of the song Ponmani Urugude in the film was absolutely unnecessary, stating that the sole reason for its inclusion was the presence of Smita in the song to help promote the film. The final length of the film was Themes and Influences Moondram Pirai depicts a young woman whose mental state regresses to that of a child following an accident. Sexuality and the repression of desire are dominant motifs, similar to Balu Mahendra's previous film Moodapani. The film also explores the possibility of unresolved sexual tension between the protagonists. Critic K. Jeshi compares Moondram Pirai to other films based on physical and mental disabilities like Setu, Pitt Hamagan, Puras Hagen, Chandramukhi, Anyan, and Gojini. When asked about the reason amnesia was chosen for a disability, Mohendra said the disorder is used as a camouflage and as an excuse to portray relationships in the film. Film critic Bharadwaj Rangan finds the sequence where Hosan's character, Chinu, narrates the story of the blue jackal to Srida this character, Bhagalakshmi, to be a distant echo of the arc negotiated by Chinu. He is, after all, a nobody, like the jackal who, through a salubrious twist of fate, becomes the ruler of a woman's life, until he is restored, at the end, to the nobody he was, a fraudulent claimant to her emotions. In his book Dispatches from the Wall Corner, A Journey Through Indian Cinema, Rangan says that although Hassan is inspired by Marlon Brando, the scene where Hassan burns himself while cooking and vents his anger on Sridevi, is reminiscent of the acting style of Marcel Marceau. In another book of Rangan, Conversations with Manny Rednam, he states that in the scene where Chinu enters Bhagalakshmi's room in the brothel, there was fumbling and embarrassment, whereas in another Hassan film Nayakan, Hosan's character, Velu Nayaka, behaves as if he has visited a brothel before. Nayakan's director Manny Rednam replied by saying that the two scenes are very different from one another and that it can't be played the same way. Nandini Ramnath, writing. 
for the website Scroll.in, noted that Moondrampere contains elements common in Balu Mahendra's other films, realism, evocative, and naturalistic cinematography, strong performances, and psychosexual themes that drive the characters to make unusual and often tragic choices. Hari Narayan of the Hindu compared Moondrampere to another Hassan film, Gunner. In both narratives, the protagonist's image of an ideal dream girl animate his antics. Chino, according to Narayan, looks like a melange of John Keats tragedy and Sigmund Freud's psychoanalysis. Narayan explains the idea of Chinu keeping Bhagalaskami with him not only as an act of sympathy and love, but also with the intention to preserve her like a portrait. Narayan also states that the character, Robert Ledgard's attraction to Vera Cruz in Pedro Almodovar's Spanish film The Skin I Live In, is similar to China's attraction to Pagalakshmi. When Pagalakshmi recovers her memory and forgets him, Chinu is hesitant to come back to his quiet existence, realizing that in reality, dreams feel like its antithesis. Music The music of the film was composed by Eli Raja. The soundtrack was released through the record label Laji Music. The number, Kani Kale Main, which is based on the Kapi Raga, and has shades of the Ragona Tabheravi, was written by Kaneda Sanin, about two minutes, time, after listening, to the film's story and the situation for the song. Kaneda San was present at the recording session of the song, which took place in September 1981. It was the last recorded song which Kaneda San wrote before his death in October 1981. Poongatru, was based on the Sindhu Bhairavi Raga. The soundtrack received positive critical reception. Ponmani Urugude, that was picturized on Hassan and Smita developed cult status. Hari Narayan of the Hindu said, the lullaby, Khan Kale Main, seized the tranquility reach a crescendo. Another critic from the Hindu, Shainka, called, Vanengam Tanga, a, dream song. On the song, Khan Kale Main, Palu Mahendra said that it, stirs you to this day. Release Moondrampurai was given an A certificate by the Central Board of Film Certification, according to Anne and Matthew of the Quint. This was done so, because of Smita who saunters into the film now and then striking Kajuraho inspired poses with Kamal. The film was released on 19 February 1982. It was a box office success and had a theatrical run of 329 days. According to Satya Jyoti Films, Moondrampirai received its highest distributor share in Chennai and Coimbatore. The film was also screened at Filka, a film festival held at Daruvan and Tapram in September 2014. Moondrampirai was dubbed into Telugu under the title Vasantar Kokila. The Hindi remake Sadma was released in 1983, with Mahendra again directing while Hassan, Sridevi and Smita reprised their roles. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?